What was my life like waiting and hoping for someone to die? It was miserable. I put myself in other people's position. To think of wanting someone to die in order to save my life. And you see where a baby got shot through the window. A child got shot in a car. I read that and I felt bad. All I could think about was this person. But when it happened to you, oh my God, I can imagine. I have said so many times, I knew what that mother felt. I developed cardiomyopathy, which is an enlarged heart. It uh, came about through living a good life of smoking, drinking, and poor eating habits. And that's how my heart disease occurred. With about approximately 85% of my heart no longer functioning, it's very difficult to do much of anything. To walk a block, it could take me close to probably a half hour to get one block holding on for dear life on anything which I could grasp onto. My breathing was like, if you're going swimming and you're underwater and you want to come up for air and you're constantly gasping, that's what I was doing constantly. If I was in the house and if I were to bump up against something or drop something, they'd be yelling, Dad, Dad, you're all right. And it was just this constant fear that I could just die at any given moment. My doctor said I had about six months to live without a heart. My son Fitzgerald, we call him Poochie, and he would call me Mommy. Mommy, what are you doing? I said, don't come here worrying me today. That's just how mean it was. I'll be back. I said, oh, you ain't coming back. And that same night, that same night, May 30, can you imagine, 30 minutes later, my phone rang, screaming, hollering. Who is this? What happened? Oh, Poochie, Poochie. I said, what this boy done got into? Girl, so long. He got shot in the head. Phone drop, hand drop. I just start shaking. He hold his head where he got shot. They say when they took his hand from there, he had brains in it. He couldn't have lived like that. When I found out that I was going to get the heart transplant, after I hung up the phone, I started crying. I was just cried uncontrollably because all I could think about was this person, that another human life had come to an end, and this was that something I had been hoping for, hoping and praying for someone to die. And you can't, and that's the worst thing that you could ever do, because when it happens, it's real. There's families are totally destroyed by that person's death. And I was hoping for it. And what compounded it was here was this family that was willing to give me their loved one's heart to save my life, the life of someone who had hoped for their loved one to die. It's not an easy decision now. Don't, don't, don't let me make you think that you could just say yes. I was about to not do it. I was, I'm gonna be honest with you, because this was my first time with somebody come to me in the hospital right after they pulled the plug, and I thought about it. This is going in the ground, and I can save someone? This was my word, why not? If you don't know my baby, if he could have talked and knew he was going to die, he'd have told me, 
Go ahead and do it. I'm gone. That's the kind of person my baby was. Knowing someone else's heart is inside of me is just awesome. That a life is continuing. It just, it's not just a benefit for me, but it's also for my donor's family because they truly understand that their loved one still lives. When his organs were transplanted, they, they went into four other people. So that's a total of five people who were given a second chance at life. So for my donor family, it's a joy for them. And for me to carry their loved one's heart and to treat it with the utmost respect and honor is a privilege. One day, it just pop up, I must write him. And we start like that. And about another three or four months, I got a call. He was sending a car for me and my family. We used to go and meet Donna. That was the biggest day. i never forget that day. He came in, dogging on a building, and he came to me and hugged me, and he said, Mom, Mom, how could I say thank you? And I said to him, Donna, you already said it. I could see it in his face. He was thanking me for the gift of life. I could feel it. It's something about organ donate. I experienced that since I did this with Donna Arthur. It's a feeling that it's hard to explain to any individual. It has to be with that person. It's, it's so hard for me to explain. The feeling is just like a mother give birth to a child, and when she see that child, that's the beautiful feeling you could have. And when I see Donna, knowing that Fitzgerald heart got him going, it's just like I give birth to another son. That's how I feel. My donor family and I, we stay in touch. I have brothers, sisters, a mom. That's what I call my donor's mother, mom. Uh, so I have a very large extended family. Every day, not hardly one, the phone ring, mom, is you okay? I'm all right. And we have come so close together. What are the chances of getting a heart transplant? They're not easy. It's a miracle. If you do get one, it's a true miracle. The doctor give down, I think he said six months? This 10 years. You know how that is? That is so grateful. The man is happy. When he talked to me, I said, how you doing today? He said, Ma, I'm fine. So you okay? Yeah, I'm finna go here, I'm finna do this. You know how that make me feel? The tears be rolling. I tell him, me and him ain't nothing but a cry baby. But don't pay my tears no mind, it's a joy to him. It'll hurt in some way, and it's a joy. There isn't just about anything I can't do. I've, I've done so much, uh, primarily Right now, my biggest endeavor is being an advocate for uh, organ and tissue donation and going around uh, the country or wherever I have to go, advocating people to think in terms of becoming a donor. I have done several marathons. I've carried the Olympic torch. I've been involved with different types of projects around organ donation. I've, I've been blessed. I've done a lot. There really isn't much that I can't do anymore. I hope this tape, you know, touch someone. They will see this video and say, this really give me a thinking. Would I do this? I hope so. We all need to realize something that was said thousands of years ago. 
we are our brother's keeper. We're not asking you to give a heart, but have a heart. To open your heart up to others. Because it's simply the greatest act of love isn't helping to save another human being's life. It's about life. It's not about death. It's about giving life. It's about having a heart 